Hello everyone and welcome back to Zoo Crafting! I am Zookeeper Siri, standing here precariously at the edge of an unprotected rope bridge as we continue on with our wonderful projects of uh, spreading treetop tours through the zoo. And it's actually nighttime and I realized we could probably use the assistance of the Moonworm Queen. So I just jumped down, oh gosh, you can't even see Sunflower from over here, but I just jumped down to the Gardens of Babylon where Graveler is hanging out and picked up the Moonroom Queen, who has once again agreed to help us with her wonderful children. Look at these guys! This is literally the best thing ever because her children will go out and they will light up the night so we don't have to worry about any dangers approaching our wonderful world. Look at that! I swear, moonworms are one of the best creatures ever. I, I cannot wait to make a, a beautiful garden of the moonworms as well. We want to actually make a moonworm cave one day, is what we've talked about in the past, where we can kind of build it like those caves in New Zealand, where they have a whole bunch of the bioluminescent worms that just light up the, the interior of the cave, and they have those beautiful dangling slime strings. Hmm. Today is an interesting day. If the first thing I'm doing is giving a moonworm rump a little squeeze to send her children flying through the air and talking to all of you about the beauty of slime strings on insects. Huh. Well, you know what? <laughs> That's what zoo crafting is all about. Being able to appreciate the beauty, the wonder, the curiosity, the weirdness of the natural world. But seriously, look at that. I cannot even imagine an easier way to be able to make sure that our treetops are well lit, which is gonna help us when we start adding animals to the treetops, which I hope will be soon. But first things first, today we're gonna go ahead and get the post started. There we go. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and like clear out this spot too. Nice. Yeah, we wanna get the post started so that it's safe for people to come over and walk onto the bridge because I don't want anyone to like fall off and I'm also trying to make it safe so that I can have Lily and Tate start joining us over here but I do need to kind of block off any danger spots uh, to do that. We can remove this torch actually and have I have glowing brown mushrooms from the Slug Kingdom actually who can help us to light up this side I can even put some glowing brown mushrooms over here. Uh, I could send some moonworms up there. Ooh, look, there's a little overhang of leaves for one of them to eat. That's so cool! Oh, I love moonworms! Oh, I think we lost that one. But, okay, that one too. Gonna have to be a little careful. Oh, that's so cool. I try to keep them mostly around leaves because I imagine they need to eat. But geez, that's just awesome. Uh, and actually, we did get several of these little glowing mushrooms from the Slug Kingdom, so might as well use them to help light up the night and protect us. Ooh, and look! Speaking of lighting up the night, the dawn is arriving beautifully. Wonderful. All right, let's block off this area to make sure that people... We may have to actually use this spot in the future, but for now, I don't want people to tumble down. So now this is blocked off and safe. We just need to finish up with this path. There we go. And then Lily, oh, and then Lily and Tate can come and join me while we work on the treetop in the forest over the peafowl garden. And I'm so excited, guys. I have been like falling asleep with my my mind just full of all of the different chirping of different kinds of forest birds. I am just tickled to pieces with excitement about the idea. Oh, they're all stuck. Oh, there's a duck in there. They are all stuck down in those chairs. We'll probably have to remove those poor peafowl. They look like they're having a little like dance. Oh my gosh, now it actually kind of reminds me of the chicken dance while I sit here and watch them. <laughs> oh goodness. 
But I thought it would be really cool to be able to have tons and tons of different types of animals, um, like different bird species. I'm even looking up ways to try to make lemurs appear in Zudesia. I'm not gonna lie, they probably wouldn't look like the lemurs that you're probably thinking of, but they would be lemurs that could live in our jungle trees. But I think we're gonna start with seeing if I can get some toucans to come and live in the trees, because I haven't really got any toucans yet, and I would really love to hatch some more parrot eggs too, and have just a lot of noise up here in the jungle canopy, so that it sounds like this place is full of all the animals. Uh, let's see. All right, that's taken care of. We can go ahead, maybe block off the canopy a bit more. Now I think I want to surround it with like oak hedging. And then when you come on down, of course, we still need to build the platforms. So I was thinking, there we go. I was thinking we could make a, a bit of a platform, block it off with some of the jungle wood fence post. And then I want to go down, so I want to have like another little vine bridge down so that we can make a platform that connects those trees down there. So you get a little bit closer to where the peafowl are, you can really be above them. And we might even have a little ladder system. Uh, so in fact, I should probably replace the vines with ladders to be completely honest, if I'm gonna be responsible. Uh, but then we could have a little ladder system so you could go straight into the peafowl garden. Oh, that would be so cool. All right, let's get some more. Oh, fooey. I'm gonna have to go collect that later. But let's get some more barricades down. Oh, this is interesting. They can be different heights, huh? I did not know that. I think it's probably because it's on top of a vine. Whoops. All right, well, that's one way to try to do this. <laughs> hey, and that lets me collect this piece, so can't really complain. All right, and then careful, careful. There we go. Oh, this is so exciting. <gasps> and the missing kitten is meowing up at us. Hi, little guy. I'll come and visit with you. We need to give you a new name because you're you're like a peafowl guardian kitten now. And I also need to see. So there is the top of that tree. Here is. <gasps> yeah! I saw that coming. I saw that coming. Yep. I d I sure did. You know what? Maybe this is. Maybe I need to work from the opposite side. Hi, little missing kitten. Little pet for you. So if I was over here. Or it looks like over here, that might actually be, well, because it'd be really fun to be able to cross over to that spot, but this looks like it might be good for me to climb up. And let's pop over right there. Okay, this is perfect. <laughs> this, this actually helps out quite a bit because now I can try making the platforms from the other side. Not exactly how I thought I was going to spend my day, but that's fine. This is important. This is part of Tata's uh, trickster expansion in our beautiful Zudesia, after all. And every time we think we have made a mistake or fallen, the trickster god really teaches us, no, no, you just need to think about uh, coming at things from a new direction. So it is a good life lesson. All right, and I do want to have a little bridge from a platform. Also, once we finish over with the bridge, I might need to come and clean up the peafowl garden because <laughs> there are so many animals in the peafowl garden that, that don't really have a place being there. All right, let's go ahead and clear that out. The peafowl are a little territorial after all. And yeah, I think this could be the spot where we make the bridge to the next side. This is so cool. I love this. I'm actually going to clear that leaf away. Whoops. And I know that seems like, oh, Siri, clear a leaf away? Quite dramatic, but ooh, ooh. Can you, okay, you can unfortunately jump on that, but I was thinking it'd be really cool if we could just like decorate some vines on the barricade. But I think people could actually jump to their doom if they're not careful. However, if I wanted to make like a taller barricade, I could do that. And then maybe just have like a little back wall. That'd be kind of nice. Why not? We're creative people around here. We can go ahead and make a little line. There we go. Can I get the last one? Look at that, that's kind of cool. And then you come over and would have a jungle post 
starting right there. And then hopefully, yeah, hopefully this would be, yeah, nice and safe. And then you can have some vines, hopefully growing all over this piece to really make it look quite pretty. Hey, get over there. All right, hopefully they'll spread, but that's kind of nice to just have like a nice little solid back. Uh, and then over here, and just think about it. We are gonna have all sorts of awesome animals, hopefully arrive. I'm very excited. The next thing we're gonna do after we get the bridge done is we're gonna try to get a couple different kinds of bird species up in the trees. And I will show you guys how I'm hoping we can kind of convince them to stay in the trees too. All right, so little path over. And then I want people to be able to like look out over this spot. So I think kind of like to come right over here. And I think it'd be okay to have both the leaves. This is so cool. We haven't built so much in donkey days. So this is very exciting. Uh, can I have the barricade on top of the leaves at a side? Hmm, that might be a little trickier. Let's try again. All right, what if I remove this and wiggle this way? Okay, that's really where it wants to be, it seems. So I might want to remove some of the leaves, just enough to be able to make a wee platform. There we go. There, all right, wonderful. And then we'll come on this side. Wonderful. All right, I'm so excited and I can't wait because hopefully then we can turn around and like, oh, look, like there's one of the fruit trees right over there. If we could have like a toucan sitting up in the fruit tree, that would be amazing. If we could get some sort of birds hanging out over here too. There's a chicken who is apparently harassing our little shopkeeper for <laughs> snacks. So this, this is really cool. And I actually want to find a way to be able to transfer some fruits uh, and kind of cross plant the fruits up into the trees around here. So that that way, if you want to be able to like, th that's how, that's how a jungle kind of is, is that's where you find the fruits is up in the trees. So I do need to find a gardener that I can work with who might be willing to figure out how to transfer some fruits and graft them onto the tops of the trees. Let me just put these down. No, that's gonna, that's not what I wanted. No, that's definitely not what I wanted. <gasps> this is a travesty. This is not what I wanted. Oh no. I have just definitely damaged this tree. Whoops. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear me. Oh no. That was not part of the plan. I need to be more carry like more more precarious with the the glorious grafter. Ah, uh, no, Ada, no need to beg. You know I'll give you some melon slices as a snack. Oh, that's so cute. It's been ages since I've listened to what our wonderful zookeepers talk about down here. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I just I can't believe I just destroyed part of the tree. And now how am I gonna get up? Oh, donkey days. Oh, donkey days. Oh, my poor tree! <laughs> and that's not what I- Mystery bug suffocated in a wall! Oh gosh, what a bit of drama. All right, well things were going very smooth, but remember what I just said? <sighs> when things suddenly don't go to plan, we, we simply have to, to figure out how to adjust. So, all right, that didn't work. Sunflower, I need your help! <laughs> Please, oh geez, Sunflower, thank you, but no thank you for the feathers right now, my dear. How did I get bug eggs? I have an ant egg from an ant inside of the, um, from an ant that was apparently inside of the peafowl garden. Oh dear. Well, you know what? We're gonna try something novel. We're gonna try having a little sapling, hopefully grow up big and strong to to support the tree. So we're gonna try something kind of special. We're gonna put the oak sapling right here. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I have anything that can count as bone meal. Um, uh, sunflower, back home. This is why it's so useful to have sunflower. All right, we're gonna fix this. We're gonna fix this. Everything's gonna be fine. All right, I have bone meal over here. 
This is fine. We've got this. Uh, and then I need jungle saplings. What do I need? Um, well, actually, this is an opportunity, isn't it? How about we make that a very special tree? And instead of panicking and just regrowing like an oak sapling, see, this is once again, Tata the trickster teaching us, of course, we should make a trickster tree. Instead of it being oak saplings on top, perhaps it was colonized by a passing bird pooping some seeds out. Bear with me, that's how this happens. And it left behind some saplings, some some wonderful fruit saplings. And apparently I don't have a lot of fruit saplings. So we need to make some fruit saplings. That's that's the next stage. Uh, oh gosh, and I need to clear my, <laughs> definitely need to clear my backpack. Also the next stage. So let's take just a second to kind of fix some of the mess that we have here. Uh, I need to get a lot more vines at some point in the near future. We have ended up with even more peafowl eggs that we I guess we can release into the jungle. Uh, an ant egg, which is very intriguing because I do like to work with the ants. A lot of oak wood <laughs> that we might need. A lot of oak leaves that I do want to use. Um, but let's make a trickster tree then. Huzzah! We will rise from the shock of having messed that up. And we will make a trickster tree by having a tree that can grow bananas, maybe some figs. Ooh, cashews. All of the birds would probably love the cashews. That would be really fun. Starfruit? Yeah, we'll, we'll make that happen. Yeah, mangoes. All right, let's go down and we're gonna make a trickster tree on top of the top of the tree that I ruined. Hello, little Henry's. Henry? Okay, phew. I can't believe that he almost, like, I don't even know how he started to escape, but I, I simply accept that it's probably going to happen for our animals uh, from time to time. And that's why we have the Henry line now. Let's see. Oh, growing some pineapple and saying that a passing bird left some seeds in the top of the tree. We need to do that too. That would be so awesome. All right, let's get a banana. Um, and what else should we grow? Fig. Fig trees are very awesome in jungles. And I absolutely want to talk figs in the future. Uh, a mango tree. Avocado would be really cool. And a date tree. A f banana, fig, mango, and date, which are all really beloved fruits of tons of different jungle animals. Fig trees serve as very important social locations for different species of monkey. Oh my gosh, I could go on and on and on about how one fig tree, often, especially the very big and the very old trees that support tons of fruit and support tons of uh, blossoms that serve as food for different animals in jungles will become almost like central locations. Whoops, that's the wrong place. They'll become kind of central meeting locations. Really, really old and large trees that provide a lot of that essential survival, that fruit, those leaves, the blossoms that the animals of the forest need become unto themselves a thriving kind of community village hub and it often is the result uh, it often ends up resulting in a lot of like combat and battles between the different animals i could go on and on and on about it because i just find it fascinating but right now let's make a trickster tree and then we'll talk more about how important fig trees and how important uh different species of tree that are preferred by different kinds of animals for nesting in are and why one tree does a lot more than just provide some delicious mangoes and bananas for a passing animal it does become like their their home all right there we go i might need a little bit of dirt but i think i have some in my pockets i sure do and let's go grow ourselves a trickster tree to make up for accidentally destroying a tree thank you very much for the chocobo feather <laughs> oh gosh all right so Sunflower, this might be a little dangerous, so I'm actually gonna put you, oh, look at where all my leaves went. They're gone. I'm actually gonna put you inside the safari net because this might be a little dangerous growing random trees. And then we're gonna put down some more dirt. And what we'll do is we will graft the two trees together. So we will actually go ahead, grow the tree, and then we will make it so that the, um, that the wood will connect between the two trees. So we'll graft them together. Let's start with the fig tree because I just talked about how important fig trees can be for the jungle. Uh, let's give it a little bit more 
dirt because we can remove all this dirt in a bit. And I just want to make sure that it will grow no problem. So, fig tree. Ta-da! And now we have figs growing in this tree, which is going to be really fun. Uh, and actually, these trees are quite adept at growing kind of against each other, which makes me very happy. So let's get this fruit tree growing. Come on. I know you want to. You think, no, I don't. But yes, you do. Come on, banana sapling. Aw, oh, man. They're normally great about just growing up against one another. <laughs> Fig tree! Maybe you're, you're too figgy. Um... I might have to make a little room. That's not what I wanted. I wanted all of you just to like mutually grow together. Here, we might climb up a little. We'll just, we're, we're gonna keep expanding this tree until we can make a trickster tree. All right, let's put the banana sapling over here. There we go! See, and now the banana sapling and the fig tree have kind of grown together. So this is gonna be our trickster tree some tricks in making it grow required. Let's see. We can go ahead and on this side, let's do the date. <gasps> there! Look at that! Oh, this is so cool! And now everywhere you look, it is a different type of tree, which is awesome. Um, and then I wonder if I can come on this side and maybe, hmm. Hmm, this is gonna be a little tricky. Maybe we should stick with three, because the mango, I'm not sure if the mango can fit now. Because <laughs> we've actually got quite a bit going on. But actually, let's come this way. And let's see if I can get the mango tree. Oh, there we go. All right, Sunflower, if you could help me. Sunflower! I'm so glad you can fly. That definitely startled you, I think. Ouch, I was hoping you would hold still, but I understand that that was a little alarming to come out of the safari net and immediately be like flying for your life. But let's get a view. All right, that's not gonna be so bad. We definitely have to do a little bit of grafting in between the two pieces to make it work. But then we will have created a trickster's fruit tree where a whole bunch of different bird species definitely left a whole bunch of seeds and ended up creating this interesting um, mishmash of different tree varieties. I love it. But all right, guys. We clearly have a lot more to do, but I love how we were able to take a complete accident, pivot, and make it a functional thing that's actually really cool and a great way to recover from knocking down half of one of these precious tall jungle trees. And uh, next time we will continue on with this project because as we continue adding tons of paths in, I'm getting more and more ideas about how we are going to be adding in the animals too. So I will see you guys next time. If you could, do please leave a like for our wonderful zoo, and if you would like to join us on this and thousands more adventures, you know what to do. And of course, guys, stay curious. Bye bye